Howdy folks. Little John in the brewery and I'm about to sit down and have a beer. Um, in this video I'm going to have I'm going to have three beers in this video. Um, there's actually six beers attached to the story, but anyway. Um, before I get into this, a uh, big shout out to all the patrons of Little John. Uh, thanks everybody for your support. If you're interested in Patreon, hit the link down the bottom. Have a look, see what it's all about. Bonuses to come along with that little bit of support for the channel. Uh, might keep it to my peach this to a thing. If not, hit the subscribe button. Become a subscriber. That way you get notified when anything happens. You don't miss anything. And hit the like button as well. Uh, all these things help out little John. Keep me doing the things that uh, apparently keep you guys coming back and watching. But anyway. Uh, as occasionally happens on the channel. One of the... What? One of the uh, viewers sends me some beers to try out. Um, and this week we've had a few turn up. Uh, these are taken up from uh, one of the patrons, Jake. Uh, thank you, mate. And he's actually... Uh, he sent me a couple of brews of his own. He sent me a couple of brews from uh, a mate of his who's got a brewery. Um, I'm going to do a video on those separately. Um, so I'll leave that for the moment. But these turned up the other day. Had no idea they were coming. Um, which is quite a nice surprise when you get a you know, random pass for the turn up. Uh, which will be, um, might be good in the future, given it's now um, 25 minutes since uh, we officially went into lockdown. Um, it's uh, Saturday afternoon here in uh, the Central West. And yeah, it's now official. We're locked down with everybody else. So. Um, Luckily I've got plenty of beer and plenty of ingredients to make plenty more beer. I think I can survive. I've got enough beer for probably the next bloody six months. Uh, ingredients to make stuff, so I'm not bloody, I'm not too concerned. Uh, it's all good. But anyway, Jake sent me, uh, so he sent me some beers and he sent me a bit of a letter here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, then he was just saying thank you for the content. Um, he's still brand new to brewing, he's telling me. Uh, and he said he's learned heaps from the channel, which is good to, always good to see. So what he's done, he sent me along three beers. And as I said, it's three of his first four beers. Um, you know, got here first beer, his second beer, and his fourth beer. So um, the third beer either was a... I don't know whether it was an abhorrent failure, um, or it was too good he didn't want to send... He didn't want to bloody part with any. But I'm not sure. That doesn't really say what happened there um so he, like I said he sent me the beers he sent me the details on the, he sent me the recipes um and his process exactly what he's done so got plenty there to have a look at uh he's got on his letter here he wants to shout out to Terry Meisner Terry's also one of the patrons Terry was actually Will John's very first patron um uh, he's been, been he's been with me ever since um who apparently got uh, Jake into brewing and got him on the Little John. So, uh, once again, the dog's gonna fucking start barking when I'm bloody doing a video. Right, anyway, let's not muck around here too much more. Uh, now, I he sent me three beers, and I, normally I wouldn't do these beers in this sort of an order, but um, these are the order of him brewing them, so I'm going to do them in that order. Ah, uh, because, yeah, there might be some reasoning or some <laughs> chance that, yeah, there's been a progression of improvement as he's gone along, but we'll soon see. Um, yeah, it's always interesting open beers from somebody you don't know. You never know what you expect when you open the bottle, because God knows I've sent people beers that have ended up making a mess. Um, so, but anyway, let's get into this fella. Now, Turned up quite nice. She's in uh, one of the James Squire bottles, and I've, I've I used to bottle in nothing but James Squire uh, for ages because um, <laughs> it was the only decent beer, only decent bottle I could get for a long time in, in locally, and I could get them easily. Uh, but I just like them. They're just a nice looking little bottle with the uh, never for, never forsake flavour on the um, on the neck, despite the fact that um, James Squire clearly forsaked flavour. 
but that's their issue. Um, got a nice little thing sticking up nicely. This one's called M's Choc Vanilla Stout, uh, ABV 5.1%, bottle on the 17th of April 21. So she's, well, three, nearly four months old. Um, so got a nice little bit of age on it. Choc Vanilla Stout, M's, named after his eldest daughter. Um, he always should, might be Emily. Could even be Emma. I think who knows. But anyway. Um, oh no, give me a crack. Nice little fizz there. There's a touch of, touch of the old smoke. Gee, nice and black. What a nice heavy head. We're going to get a nice, nice overflow. Oh, would have made a beautiful beer commercial. Now it makes a mess in my table. But hey, I've got no problem with that. I make a mess in my table all the time. The only problem is it starts fucking dripping all open. I'm trying to drink it. But we can fix that. We have the technology. The technology wasn't just used to make a fucking bionic man. We've progressed beyond that. <laughs> we have technology that allows us to mop up mess. Alright. Jake Muldoon's M's Choc Vanilla Stout and now she black she nice and dark, good tan head oh lovely chocolate and coffee note on there so what he's got in here ah he's used the Cooper's Cooper's Stout as his base, Cooper's Stout tin One dark malt liquid extract. Assume that would be Cooper's, doesn't actually say, but it doesn't particularly matter, but anyway. 200 grams of medium chocolate malt. Uh, which he cold steeped for 24 hours. Then he boiled that for a uh, little bit with uh, a vanilla bean. Uh, added uh, 100 grams of cocoa powder, cacao powder. Uh, fermented that uh, he used one and a half packs of Nottingham which is an interesting one and a half packs but anyway um, topped up the 21 litres so he's pulled it back a little bit on the volume rehydrated his yeast to 21 degrees, nice fermented at 19.5 OG 1050, final gravity of 1014 so it would appear to have done all the right things for a beer of um, the style and the ingredients. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> for someone for someone's first fucking own brew, you've done a bloody good job. Let's have a fucking good teacher. Someone's fucking taught him right. But yeah, no, that's a taste. That's a tasty brew, Jake. Well done, mate. Now, Jake was um, he wasn't specifically uh, wanting good feedback. Uh, just the beers for him to try, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, he wasn't. Fuss one way or another about whether I did them, did them up on the channel or not. I said, oh buddy, I'll give him a crack. Um, look, obviously, if someone sends me beers and they're and they're rubbish. I'm not going to put it up on the channel. Um, not that kind of person. All oh, rubbish, fucking commercial brewers. No problem at all. But not not bloody fellow home brewers. It's about about um, giving helpful advice. So, but this is a this is a nice beer. Not brewed a lot of um, kit stouts myself. Actually, I don't even think I've ever. No, that's not true. I did brew. I have brewed one stout kit. Um, 
which I'll put, I'll put a link up to that video, which was a brew that ended up becoming an Imperial. Um, it was actually... <laughs> and that may have been the beer I did on the um, how to brew a good kick beer video uh, initially because um, I'm pretty sure that was a stout. Was the only time I've, I'm sure it's the only time I've actually brewed a stout from a kit. Uh, and it came up quite well. as that come up quite good. But this is nice. There's a tiny little bit of kittiness un like underneath, underlying, but that's not much. There's just a subtle bit of chocolate. Good, a good rubbing of coffee. Rubbing, that's an interesting description, isn't it? Like it's not a big coffee note, but it's there. It's just, um, it's like if you had a cappuccino and you've, when you've finished and you've just got, or just even like a latte or something, you've got that little bit of, scummy coffee around the edges of the edges of the cup and you run your finger around it and you know you get that coffee edge but it's not really you know big coffee because it's not enough of it that's sort of the feel it gives which is going to be coming from the from the from the extract um It's that little bit of the vanilla there. Uh, again, it's not it's not coming on. It's not big. It's not right. It's not all over. Not all over the shop. Um, I comment quite a lot with a commercial beer. That yeah, you know, if you're going to call the beer, if you're going to na name an ingredient in a, in a name of the beer, and yeah, you, know, you need to be able to have that flavour be noticeable. The chocolate and the vanilla are both there in this beer. They're not big. They're not big. They're not overly pronounced. Um, like it's certainly not the vanilla you're going to get with, with, a, with a pastry stout. Um, but it's there. It's, and it's just playing a nice little bit of bit of the game. Put a little bit of sweetness on it. But yeah, fuck. That's a bloody nice drop, Jake. Um, I've certainly had a lot. I've had many commercial stouts that don't stack up to that. Uh, so, <laughs> great job. Um, I'm looking forward to the, <laughs> the next two brews, that's for sure. Uh, so, well and good. Um, so, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get straight into the second one here. Um, it's, it's actually um, an Eclipse XBA recipe, which I did as a recipe of the month for the Patreons. Um, so it's a quite substantially lighter beer than this. I don't know whether it's the right beer to follow up just straight after this and get into that. Um, though I'm really I'm expecting to sit down and have another bloody beer, so probably can't hurt. That's it, let's do it. That's all good. I'm gonna keep that, Jake. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to cook the onions tonight on the barbecue for dinner. Uh, Now I'm not sure how he's how he's bottling is, but that seems to be what he's fermenting in, but that's a clean that's a fairly clean bottle, so um don't know whether he's bottling with a gun, if he's on a, on pressure or what, I don't know, he hasn't done that. I don't think he has. doesn't doesn't say but anyway on the back of this page and the first bit is the second bit um, 
this one's called Henley's Lawnmower Ale. Um, now there's a picture of a uh, map of California on there. Um, whether it shows up on there I don't know but I know California when I see it um, being a ex-geography student of the University of Wollongong I do understand, I do know some of the major countries by <laughs> why I uh, anyway so as I said, this is the uh, Henley is named after his youngest daughter okay there's good gas on that You know, again, there's, yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything on the bottom of these bottles, so he must be bottling from a bloody, I'm assuming he's bottling under pressure, from a pressure fermenter. So, this one's in a stone and wood bottle. So he's been drinking some of the, uh, well, his mates have been drinking some of the uh, standard craft beers, entry levels. So, for those at home who aren't Patreons, uh, and like I said, this is you should be patrons because then you understand this stuff. Um, this, like I said, you, you, the Eclipse XBA recipe, which is recipe of the month I've done um, oh, a few months back uh, after I did an XBA, an Eclipse XBA on my own. Uh, and this was a bit of a tweak on that. So, what it is, uh, it's a Mexican cerveza, kid is the base, uh, 100 grams of pale crystal. 200 grams of light dry malt, 600 grams of dextrose. Now, you've got in brackets here, I stuffed this and only put in 200 grams. Uh, I won't write what is continued on saying there, but anyway, so, as I realise, it's, it's a bit, a little bit light on. 100 grams of Eclipse up, 20 grams of starter, starter, strata. Original gravity 1030 with a final gravity 1007. Uh, yeah, missing. Yeah, 400 grams of dextrose is going to knock your uh, gravity around a little bit. Um, boiled, steep grain, boiled, other eclipse. Okay, now he's dried up with um, 30 grams of eclipse. Uh, double, it's a double amount in the um, in in a, in, a, in a boil. Uh, now you need to rehydrate the juice at 20 degrees, fermented at 16. Doesn't say what yeast is used on here. Uh, so, age, well, actually, you had the grab alcohol on here, 3.3%. So, 23 points, 2.23, 6, 7, 3. Okay, well that doesn't add up in my body, by my mathematics, so possibly he is priming these, but yeah, I'm not seeing any real evidence of that. That's pretty clear. Anyway. This is interesting, because <laughs> up until recently, I said this was with, with the patrons, but I sent out these recipes a month, and they're just recipes I, I create, um, and apart from one or two early on, um, generally they'd be either having brewed, it's just working off stuff I have brewed and tweaking and some tweaks I would know it would make to certain beers. Um, so they're not necessarily all tried. Um, and yeah, I've quite often, you know, I get good feedback from the patrons saying they're good to beers on it, but I've never actually had a chance to try one of my own. <laughs> Which is um, crazy. Um, but I've done it before, I've had yeah, a couple of times over the years, people have sent me beers where I've sent them recipes, I help them with a recipe and they've sent beers for me to try after, afterwards. Um, so this is sort of that same situation. So, um, this is... Um, <laughs> keen to get into this one. So... Okay, there's a light nose. Just gentle fruits there. She's got a nice carbon, good carbonation, good size head. It's nice and clear. It's 
just gentle soft tones like a bit of passion fruit mandarin a bit of rock melon yeah, it's like, sort of tropically citrusy and melony notes Mate, you've done it again. Oi. That's a nice that's a nice drop. No real kick crap going on, no kittiness, no twang. It's a nice little bit of hop. Um, yeah, it's a good amount of hop though, 120 grams all up. Uh, it's 100 grams of Eclipse. I've found that the Eclipse itself is not a particularly punchy hop. It does take a bit to really get the best out, to, to get a you know, big lot of flavour out of it. Um, I want to play with it on a much bigger level, um, but that's another, that's a step aside from this. But this is playing quite nicely. Yeah, 3.3% 3 .3 beer. It's got plenty of flavour. It's good body. Yeah, for 1.007. Yeah, for a light, low finish. Yeah, fairly low finish. Yeah, it's still got plenty of mouthfeel and body. Doesn't, it's not watery or hollow. Mm, lovely body, lovely head. I'm real, I'm really happy for this, for yeah, you know, from two angles. One, yeah, I started this channel because I wanted to help other brewers. Um, it's what the channel's always been about. Um, yeah, yeah, it's always been about helping other brewers to improve their brewing, to make the best. I said, as I always said, make the best beer that you can. Um, or yeah, make beer as good as you can with. The, with the level you want to go to, any way you want to look at it. Um, <laughs> this right here, for for a new brewer, for someone who's not brewed before, to come out and go, these are my first, these are the first two beers he's brewed. That's fucking awesome. It really is. Um, it took me a long time to get anywhere near brewing to that to, to that level. Even with kids, yeah. Um, so that makes me very happy from that point that someone's been able to use my advice and yeah, stuff that I'm putting out there um, and make themselves. Yeah, some really good beers. Uh, and the other, the other thing that makes me happy is the fact that uh, seeing that, yeah, I'm knocking out recipes at work. Um, because that's always, yeah. We all know as brewers, it's always hit and miss. You, you, you create a recipe uh, and you don't know what works until you brew it. Um, and, yeah, quite often a beer will look like it's going to work on paper, but it doesn't necessarily come out that great on uh, yeah in the bottle or in the glass pardon me these two have both worked two very very different beers <laughs> very end of perhaps and ends of the scale yeah yeah big dark chocolatey vanilla stout yeah and a light yeah a cerveza base of a cerveza yeah one of the lightest beers you're going to get uh, two extremes and both knocked out really, really well. Um, so, I'm happy, mate, Jake. That's fantastic. <sighs> yeah, mate, you've done really bloody. You've done well. Um, I'm going to leave that for the moment. Like I said, there's still one beer to go, which I'm not going to get on to today. 
Uh, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, and it looks like it looks like an interesting brew. Um, and given what these two have delivered so far, I'm really interested to uh, have a crack at that one. So, it's thumbs up from me so far, Jake. Uh, so, I'm going to nick off and do some other stuff. I'll see you all soon for that last beer. Right, okay, folks. Here we go. Beer number three in this bloody this run of beers from uh, from Jake. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm just um uh, the bloody what, what the things of lockdown make you do. <laughs> Little brothers just start to click and collect on the front driveway. Bloody cart and the beer. Ah. <laughs> He's picked up a cart and the bloody <laughs> one of the batches from extracting hands up. <laughs> Set out the front. He's lifted. $20 note under the garage door. <laughs> yeah, things you gotta do. Anyway, let's get on with this. <laughs> so third beer in the uh, in this batch. Um, first two been bloody uh, been real nice. So I'm actually looking forward to this one. This is a um it's unlabeled. Uh, <laughs> Jake's put he's ran out of kids to, to to use for names, so obviously he's only got two kids, or he's got a third kid and he doesn't like them. But either way, um, this one is a Cooper's Oat Cream IPA. Yeah, I've not tried such a such a thing from a kit, so um, I'm interested to see how this goes. So, we really want to pour. Oh, this feels a little bit. Is the only one might take a little bit, so while that's uh, that's going to take a little time, let's talk about what this beer is. Uh, one can of Mexican cerveza, uh, one Cooper's wheat malt, uh, tin, uh, 1.5 kilos, uh, 250 grams of golden naked oats, 100 grams of lactose, and 25 grams each of Bravo Citra Galaxy. Uh, so he steeped, he steeped the eight for a while. Um, he bring them, he boiled those with some lactose, stuck some Bravo in, and then let that stand. Okay, that stood for 30 minutes. Uh, added that to the uh, all the tin and everything into the into the fermenter. Yeah, uh, topped up to 22 liters pitched verdant IPA yeast at 19. Fermented at 18, he's dry hopped the Citroen Galaxy at day 6. Original Galaxy 1049, Final Gravity 1014. So, that sounds interesting. So, obviously, using the, um, the Bravo. For 30 minutes, obviously throwing a little bit extra bitterness on top of that cerveza can, which is fairly light, and it's probably not a bad, um, not a bad idea as a base for a, for an IPA. Uh, you can build, build up because it doesn't really bring a lot to the party, so you can build up on that. It's got some, it's got some lovely citrus notes. Um, yeah, it's only 25 grams of the Galaxy and the Citra, but it's got a real nice little note there. She's fairly gluty. Now I don't know how old this one is, and I'm assuming this one's going to be considerably fresher. Now beer number one. Oh, now I've got the. I haven't still got the body. The label's gone. I don't think it actually says on here. It's on the label. I can't remember. But either way, this one's definitely going to be fresher. But let's um. See if we can get through this big frothy head and get a taster on it. Ooh. 
looks interesting. Now, there's two things that are going to, for me to some degree, going to compete a little bit for flavour. Um, one is the kit twang that m may be evident, and also the verdant yeast. Um, I've not done a lot with it, and I've currently got an extract again to brew, which is going to come out in a couple of days, which has been running with the verdant. Uh, and my experience is that it brings up that citrusy note, and has, but it has a, for me, it has a bit of a rancid edge to it. Um, a rancid edge that, when thrown into a kit beer, could be confused to some degree to a little bit, a little bit of twang, um, and or could. Assenuate that actual, you know, little bit of kit twang if, if it is there. But, okay, that's most, it is mostly clean. That's pretty clean, that's tasty. It's not a big out there beer, it's not sort of really jumping out as this like I'm not pick I can't certainly can't pick anything wrong with it flavour wise. There's nothing jumping out going, yeah, here's an issue. Um so you know, once again, yeah, three out of three out of three, Jake, you've nailed bloody um Obviously, some nice methods and some nice fermentation processes. Um, it's a bit beer, so it's got some nice fruit. Uh, there's going to be a bit of that coming from the yeast. There's a little bit of, yeah, there's a very little sweetness under there, which is going to come from the lactose, and some smoothness from the oats. Tartness from the wheat. It's a nice brew. I think it's probably overall just lacking a little bit of depth, a little bit of hot presence. Um, but it's only a minor thing, it's only small. Um, It's a tasty, tasty, creamy, yeah, lovely beer. Yeah, Jake, man, thank you very much. Um, free. Yeah, that's free out of your first four beers and, you know, you're ticking boxes. Um, if that's what you're knocking out, yeah, so early. Um, <laughs> brilliant, mate, brilliant. They're going to keep you, <laughs> certainly going to keep you around in the uh, brewing game for quite a while. You're doing that. Um, yeah, that's three, three really good, you know, kit-based beers back-to-back. Yeah, very good. Um, pardon me. Uh, yeah, mate. You said, whatever you're doing, whatever you like the price. Yeah, you've, you've obviously taken on board things you've been looking, things you've watched, things you've learned, um, and put into practice. Uh, very nice. Um, yeah, I'd give Terry a big thank you for. Uh, yeah, putting in the putting in the right direction because 
I can't admit this, there really wouldn't be too many brewers that three of their beers out of the first four are that quality. Uh, and in all honesty, it'd be unusual to, realistically to sit down and drink three beers in a row from a commercial, yeah, from a lot of breweries that knock out, yeah, cons yeah consistently decent, like these three that be. But, Jake, thank you very much for sending them on. <laughs> Send me beers any time you want, mate. That's the kind of, yeah, that's the quality you're knocking out. Brilliant. Ah. So, Jake, mate, thank you, thank you for sending me these beers. Um, I've enjoyed them very much. Uh, anybody else on the channel, the Patreon, subscribe. Anybody interested? Yeah, wants. Yeah, you'd like a beer critiqued. Um, some advice offered if need be. Um, go ahead, send them, send them through. Uh, more than happy, to, more than happy to have a crack at your beers. Uh, but for now, I'm out of here. So, if you got any comments, any questions? As always, stick them down the bottom. Um, again, patrons, thank you very much for your support. Um, I like getting paid back with this sort of stuff. Uh, Again, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe cut button down there in the corner. And hit the like button if you haven't haven't, haven't hit it so far. Uh, that's me. Jake, I can't offer you anything other than continue doing what you're doing, mate. Because um, it's working. So, guys, that's me. Until I see you again. Brewing beer. Drinking beer or talking beer. Good brewing. <laughs>